Christian is a senior program officer um, on soil health at the Bill and, Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation based in, in Seattle. So early morning for you, uh, Christian. Thanks for that. Uh, you have, as far as I know, at least 20 years, probably near 30 uh, years of experience in field research, starting with soil science, uh, plant nutrition, but moving into much more proactive uh, change. Uh, change processes. So I gave you a title. I don't know if it was accurate or enough uh, uh, or not, but I'll, I'll hand over to you now anyway to take it away. So thanks very much. Thank you, Simon, and good day, everyone. I uh, trust that you can see my screen. Um, I'm co-presenting with Zieglinde Snap, but uh, she has some audio issues, so asked me to uh, present. We would like to... Um, talk about smallholder farming, where I think the challenges of working on farm and at scale are exemplified as we are dealing with millions and millions of smallholder farmers and uh, who are, are managing often uh, uh, an acre or half a hectare or, or less. And moreover, smallholder farming um, in, the, in the south is characterized by, by high risk more than ever. Uh, so the incidence of uh, extreme weather uh, it's increasing, including floods and droughts and dry spells. And market prices fluctuate for both inputs and outputs. And the resource base is under threat as well through soil degradation, for example. Field-to-field -field variability is often higher than regional variability. And this heterogeneity of soils and micro uh, typography across fields poses a further risk. But it is also an opportunity for hyperlocal management. So this is the urgent context we face today. Advisory services and service provisions is needed that generates local solutions and that link science to farmer knowledge. So for this, we need ways to organize research and service provision to operate across large uh, areas and reach millions of farmers in, in scalable, in cost-effective ways while adopting farmer-centric approaches in, in order to offer locally relevant solutions. Uh, so we share here today a few experiences from the field as uh, examples uh, of farmer-centric services. And it's by no means an attempt to be comprehensive or offer a framework. And uh, we are very keen to learn uh, more with you and from you. We thought we lead with a, a set of questions uh, that uh, go a little bit beyond on-farm experimentation, but questions that often guide us as we deal with large smallholder communities. What do farmers actually do? Why? Uh, how do you cater to needs, as I mentioned, uh, and, and yet deliver services at scale, which seems a contradiction? Um, how do you achieve economy of scale in agronomy research? And 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 more, and this is uh, uh, just uh, in uh, in an in illustrative, illustrative list here, um, and you can add more and more. And um, and we wanted to start with looking at the ecosystem because uh, as researchers, we're not working with farmers in uh, isolated from others. So increasingly, and if, especially if you think about climate informed advisory, we're dealing with a very broad set of actors who all interface with farmers, but often what we observe is we have pockets of learning and the pieces are not connected. So one of the challenges is how do we better leverage what we're all learning as we're working with smallholders and uh, with the aim to uh, really improve our, our services uh, to them. Um, and let me just uh, give you walk you through three, four, five examples, and uh, and and this is the first. It all starts with knowing. Uh, in this particular case, um, uh, rapid uh, diagnostic surveys were deployed to look into um, you know the uh, effect of early and late planting in wheat. And, uh, and the agronomic efficiency to fertilizer use. And what we found is there's a broad range. And when you, uh, we learned uh, about farmers' practices, we realized there are several factors influencing the poor performance of fertilizer 
in certain regions and and um, and the better performance in others. So it is a combination of day of seeding, of irrigation frequency, and weed management. And these early insights allow you to form hypotheses and walk informed into farmers' field as you now start to address these tackles. Because there's not one problem; there are many problems. Um, so working at scale will uh, most likely require. Um, you know, making uh, use of digital technologies and in combination with on-farm experimentation. So here we just see, you know, various entry points in the upper left area around field trials. Um, so now engaging with farmers, but on the right end as well, you have service providers engaging uh, directly with farmers. Um, a few, um, sorry, let me just, get to the next slide here. Um, we often see that um, uh, this speaks to the issue of uh, dealing with the variability in crop response. We see various sources of uh, variability here in terms of scale. And uh, as we uh, realize that there's a need for greater localization, um, and we can't deploy uh, really uh, expensive diagnostic tools, you know, working with farmers in a dialogue to help her make, uh, you know, uh, think through the issues and the opportunities is often helping to combine uh, data science that runs at the uh, higher scale level with local knowledge. So for example, here using pictorials uh, to um, uh, ask farmers, what is the yield that you're getting in your field? And that in itself is a is a um, indicator of soil fertility. So there are ways of engaging and uh, taking input into narrowing down sensible options uh, that that could be used. Here's another example, and uh, Zieglinde can speak a lot more intelligently. Uh, about this, but uh, the um, theme is the same. As we know that, uh, you know, uh, again, nutrient response uh, depends heavily on soil fertility. If we can characterize it in the field here with the help of a handheld device, then we are able to better tailor our recommendation to specific fields. Let me pivot away from variability and uh, give you two examples around learning from farmer decision making. This goes again a little, a little bit beyond um, on-farm experimentation, um, but uh, uh, the example of um, the sub-1 gene in rice, which uh, enables the rice plant to tolerate longer periods of flooding um, as this variety was introduced in heavy flood uh, risk areas, uh, the uh, researchers working with farmers uh, re realized that um, there was a yield benefit not only when there was flooding, but also in seasons where flooding was absent, simply because farmers used the variety as an insurance against flooding and were willing to invest more time, for example, in uh, crop management or inputs, even the area grown uh, increased. Uh, it is important, therefore, to um, really uh, get closer and a better understanding around farmer decision making um, at, uh, at various ends. And I'll keep this one short, but the principle again here is um, uh, if um, uh, you have narrowed down certain options uh, working with farmers um, in in this choice experiment. Uh, the blue bar you re you see that um, the the practices actually uh, that were worked out here uh, saw greater adoption with um, a funding contribution. So farmers were willing to actually test out certain practices when they were given a financial incentive and less so when they were just given advice. 
And you see that the yield, the, the light blue bar in the center was actually the same across these four treatments. But what you found, what, what we found, what the researchers found here after um, two years post-intervention is if farmers were given a flexible grant, that means they decide really what to test, how to test it, that gave them a different, uh, more skin in the game and it was well, more it's, ownership it's the way that in. actually it's leads the way to greater adoption. Um, so let me just um, end here with this um, uh, last example also that we have greater tools today to get insights into decision making. An example from 60 decibels who call up a subset of representative farmers and um, and uh, you know, ask a sh in a short survey, gather very specific inputs on certain questions. In this case, you know, around the cadence over uh, growing cassava between men and women. So our toolbox as agronomists uh, has multiplied, uh, not just because we have. Um, our thinking has evolved and our the the approach to on-farm experimentation has changed dramatically from the 1990s where uh, you know we just moved from station to field which which helped but uh, how to work more closely with farmers has changed ultimately and uh, also the way we um, connect with an ecosystem of partners who bring in additional approaches, perspectives, and, and tools that, uh, that we use. So I'd like, you, like to leave you with um, a few learnings here. Yes, and um, the, um, I would say the, I'm, I spoke to, to most of them, um, but to me, the ecosystem of partners is, um, uh, a in in evolution that um, I think offers uh, fantastic opportunities uh, for agronomists actually to change the way the way they work. Uh, so I'd like to leave you with a slide and invite um, Simon to to take over uh, in the interest of time. Thank you thank very you. much, Christian, uh, and thank you, Sieglinde, for your input i realize you're having trouble with the with the sound some very important worth keeping that slide up just for one second because i think there are some really uh, helpful lessons to learn from that and the big one I've, I've got a quick question to you actually christian if i may uh do, do how far off do you think we are about learning how to operate in this uh, ecosystem uh, we have new data sources uh, Sentinel-2 and we have 30 meter soil, uh, digital soil map, which must help. Uh, but I guess what we have, we've got a lot of learning to do to work out how to reconfigure the way that we or others will work. How, if how I, close are we, think? If I uh, had to answer this from a perspective of research, I would say the, uh, the real opportunity is working with organizations who already work at scale with farmers. I'm thinking of Jivika, uh, for example, in India, or uh, One Acre Fan, working with a million mm -hmm. farmers, um, adopting a very farmer-centric approach. Now, they work with certain segments of the farming community, not with everyone. And their offering may also, um, in case of One Acre Fund, uh, you know, apply to a certain group of farmers and not everyone, but the principles on how uh, they validate uh, interventions with farmers from day one because of this farmer first approach, I think offers fantastic opportunities. We see, we see um, a lot of pockets of learning. I think the art will be, how do you put this together in such a way that you know, if you're a research organization, you stay true to your comparative advantage, but you uh, connect uh, with partners in a different way. Uh, and that's something where I think uh, more innovation is needed um, to, to be sure that we are 
demand driven and customer and client oriented in our research and that is only possible if we work with and through others and this will require i think changes in in the way we conceptualize and prioritize research excellent yes good point great that's fantastic well well thanks to you thanks to you both